Well, it's been a really long day and I just want to go and retire into my library and relax a little bit here. But I figured this would be kind of a cool video to show you one of the rooms in my house that I spend a lot, a lot of time in. It's a room that I call the library. And not only do I have a lot of books in here, but it just reminds me of uh, an old library, just the, just the feel and the decor and the setting, the furniture, and the way the way the room is just finished or unfinished for that matter. So this is kind of a, a, a room that I spend a lot, a lot of time in. Um, for starters, it's about 18 feet by 18 feet. It's a relatively good sized room. It's not huge. And it's very comfortable. I've got a nice leather sofa here that is just a, a joy to sit on and coffee table. And this is my desk here. It's kind of my office away from the office. And over here, you see some of my camera equipment and my GoPro and speakers for my sound system and that quilt that's hanging in the doorway there is just to kind of insulate some of the uh, draft from the front door and my leather recliner and of course my big Vermont castings wood stove which is uh, just a real powerhouse of a wood stove. Anyone who has a, an old Vermont casting, especially especially one of these earlier um, Defiance. This stove was made in 1975 before all of the EPA settings and standards and what have you. This is just a good old-fashioned machine. Not even really a machine, just a good old-fashioned stove that when you light a fire it gets hot and it stays hot and this stove overpowers many many homes um, including this one and we're very thankful for it this was given to us by Julie's parents who replaced this after owning it for over 40 years or about 40 years they replaced it um, just because of the maintenance and the stacking and splitting firewood and they replaced it with a um, gas insert. So that's working out for them and this is working out for us. On the mantle, I have an old brass schooner. It's something I picked up with my parents, I don't know, probably 20 years ago and it was decorating um, one of their homes at the time and somehow I, I ended up with it and uh, I'm happy for that. It's a cool, piece fits well on the mantle. You'll see kind of a lot of artifacts re resembling um, the maritime motif. You'll see a barometer and a clock made by the Chelsea Chelsea Corporation and I've had those for geez 20, 20 years or so. This old steering wheel here belonged to my grandfather, whom I never met, he died three years before I was born, and this steering wheel was on a little sea skiff that he had as a teenager, and he used to um, mess around with boats, gosh, from his boyhood right up until his death in the early 70s, and um, I was able to uh, end up with this, and my grandmother, I believe, gave this to me over 25 say, oh, 25 years ago or so and so that's another special artifact it's got a few hats hanging not much of a ball cap guy and I'm not much of a sports guy at all I do uh, do like my golf but I haven't played in a while and golf is a great fun sport but that's exactly what it is it's a sport and it's a waste of time it's four hours that I have not to spare, let's put it that way. I'd feel so guilty if I got out there and played as much golf as I used to. You probably figured out by now I'm quite a a nut for the ocean and for boats and what have you. As long as, as far back as I can remember, I've been a boat nut. And uh, that hasn't changed. Except that um, I don't do it recreationally anymore. Unfortunately, given my my position, 
on where I think things are going as a country and as a society. I don't feel as free to recreate as I used to. I feel like there are tasks that need to be accomplished and we need to make haste in getting them accomplished and if they're not we could suffer some grave consequences. <laughs> Nonetheless, these artifacts hanging on the wall and decorating this room would make you believe that I spent all my free time on boats. This is a picture that was painted of my brother and I um, when we were little kids, I don't know, probably six and four years old or somewhere around there. It's a painting that he gave me for being the best man at his wedding and his name's Travis and uh, what a wonderful guy. What a, Not because he's my brother, but just because he's a wonderful person. And uh, this is a very special picture. It reminds me of uh, great times growing up with Trav. And uh, over here, we can't, no, no, no man's library would be complete without some, some sign to the effect of leave me alone and um, don't tread on me and trespassers will be shot, survivors will be shot again. Not sure if I really mean that, but um, no, one's, no one's tested me yet, so I guess that's a good thing. Yet another boat, and of course, yet another boat. <laughs> and over here, up behind the sofa, is one of my favorite pictures of my, uh, my oldest son, or my older son, I should say, Luke, when he was probably four years old, and we were on a train. He used to love trains. I still think he loves trains, actually. And uh, we had a lot of great times running around and messing around on trains and doing that stuff. Coffee table, a couple of manuals, one for my new old Iseki Boland's diesel tractor and uh, a manual for my John Deere 690 ELC um, excavator. That's the excavator that I have up at the cabin and um, it's going to live up there for a while until we get the work done this spring. And uh, just as a side note, you know, many people <clears throat> have different definitions of what off grid is. I'm not going to take this time right now to describe what off grid is to me. But right now we are not off grid. We are going off grid. And I see absolutely no reason whatsoever. I'm going to spin this camera around for just a second. I don't see any reason whatsoever to forsake the power and the luxury and the abilities of mechanized equipment like excavators and dozers and tractors and things like that. Um, because right now we have this equipment available to us and things in the society are functioning relatively normally. Um, don't get me started on that. That's an entirely separate subject. They're really not functioning normally, but I mean, to the extent that when we wake up in the morning, we can still go to the gas station and we can fill up our vehicles and we're not being rationed quite yet anyhow. And, um, you know, we don't have crazy um, daily circumstances that would prohibit us from using this equipment. My view is rather than use my already aching back to do the work that's necessary to build out uh, the off-grid facility as it will become, I'd rather do five years worth of work in a month um, than have to endure the pain and the the suffering of doing it manually. Now, to many people that might be considered a cop-out, and that's okay, but um, to me it's, it's about getting there as quickly as possible, enjoying the process along the way, but making sure that the reason for um, going off-grid are fulfilled. And those reasons to me are independence, self-sufficiency, and um, the ability to subside without um, depending on outside systems. And those, um, those objectives are, of course, imminent, or excuse me, not, that's not the right word, they're not imminent, they're um, very important to me because of what I believe is imminent in this country. Um, a major, major economic collapse, um, economic calamity, which is going to lead to 
um, all kinds of crazy societal breakdowns which could affect people. And I know, um, you know, I may be losing some of you here um, thinking that I'm some wild conspiracy guy and, you know, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. But just because uh, you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not following you. <laughs> so anyways, let's get back to the library tour. Um, we'll go into this more in another video. I haven't really broached this subject on this channel quite yet and um, it's not for any other reason except that there hasn't been an occasion we've been so busy with so many other things but there are some philosophical matters that I think will be very important to cover and who knows let's see where this video goes but I want to continue the library tour and we're gonna to get to the bookshelf right now and the bookshelf is kind of where um, you'll learn a lot about uh, how I tick so uh, I'll turn the camera back around and we'll continue All right, this bookshelf is really an eclectic, uh, bizarre, and um, I don't know, diversified menagerie of books. And I guess I'm just going to start, I don't know, let's start on the bottom left. And uh, I'm not going to go through every book that I have. I'm just going to go through kind of the prevailing theme of the shelf. There's a lot of Christian and theological material in my library. And this isn't my entire library, but this is, um, this is the bulk of the books that I find valuable on a fairly regular basis. I'm not saying I read these on a regular basis, but they're here at my fingertips. Um, if you see a book in here that you think may disagree with some of the things that I'm talking about, I own books that I disagree with. For example, um, The Message is a very liberal, loose interpretation of Scripture, which I purchased for only one purpose, to show exactly how errant and how flawed it is as a translation. Um, I don't necessarily agree with the Jerusalem Bible as a translation, but I own it. Um, God's Little Instruction Book. I'm not saying that I agree with the way that that book was assembled, but I own it because there are things that I can learn from books that I disagree with, and I found that when a book is written that contains so much error that um, I feel it in my gut, it becomes much easier to understand the truth when it is sitting next to the truth. And so I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but hopefully it will. The next shelf up. Lots more Christian literature. Um, uh, lots of C.S. Lewis and, um, you know, Charles Spurgeon, Morning and Evening. That's just kind of a good condensed version of um, some of Spurgeon's sermons and teachings. The next shelf up, um, more, more theology, and this is more doctrinal stuff. Um, on the far right, there's a book, and you probably can't see it in this low light, <clears throat> called Scientific Creation, Scientific Creationism, sorry, and that is a wonderful book that makes arguments, arguments that really don't even need to be made to support creationism over the farce and the lie of evolution. Um, I've also found a lot of um, very, very good material in the writings of Jay Adams from a Nuthetic counseling, Christian counseling perspective. He's, he's an awesome guy, and again, I don't agree with everything he says, but there's a really good, um, there's a really good trove of knowledge um, that can be learn from this fellow. Calvin's Institutes, um, this is kind of condensed version. Uh, you know, there's so much about, quote, Christianity that has been perverted by this modern age. And I'm not going to get into a discussion on, you know, theology at the moment. We're definitely going to end up doing that, I have a feeling, but right now is not the time. Um, the principles and the tenets of Calvinism, I tend to subscribe to. That doesn't mean that I am inside some box called Calvinism. Moving on, systematic theologies. 
Um, Burkhoff is a is a very good systematic theology. Wayne Grudem is a much more modern <clears throat> and um, very good systematic theology. Getting up here to the next shelf, man, we're in like the theology department here. We don't have the Dewey Decimal System, but we just have the uh, the Bible stuff and the other stuff. Matthew Henry's Commentary, Bible Dictionary, Harmony of the Gospels, um, in both NIV and NASB. Then I have uh, some of John MacArthur's commentaries on Romans and 1 Corinthians. And then I have, have Hodge's systemat Systematic Theology in three vo um, volumes. I have... Um, that's Spurgeon's sermons. Gosh, I really feel badly about the low light here. I'm running a Canon XA10, which is a very, very good camera. And a very expensive camera, I might add. But the low light capabilities, I'm not impressed with. And the lighting here in the library, as you can see, is not the best. I mean, 